Made in Snickers. really yummy what's happening Nika Jaguar Ooh. mm. Very good. No, no, we're watching MasterChef, mate. We're going to get through MasterChef before I can watch a movie. Every time we have spare with my girlfriend, we're watching MasterChef so we can get up to speed. Yes, it's going to be fun. No beers tonight, mate. No beers tonight. Yes, Obi Wan. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool indeed. All right. Um, I'm gonna paint this war bear tonight, and I'm gonna turn off my camera so that I can use this footage. Stand by. Uh, we are going to use a dark blue green for this. So we're going to mix some colors together. Okay, let's go. Uh... <laughs> Brown bear? False. Black bear. <laughs> Question. Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. That's not a question. Michael! <laughs> well, that was a good one, didn't I? Stand by for a very brief moment while I fix up the absolute clusterfuck of paints that just fell onto my <laughs> onto my work area. That's a good job. It's all big Dano right there at his best. Yeah, it's standing. I'm gonna fix this. Fuck. All right. Blue tack maybe demo. Blue tack maybe. That could be the go. <clears throat> I just dropped something. That's something being a light that is illuminating my palette. Do for the moment. <laughs> Fuck, it's paints everywhere. Good start to the stream. Good start. Fuck off. Hello, Bucks, by the way. Welcome. 
forgot I had that color. Use that. All right, we're back in the zone, probably. <laughs> no, 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 Koki tonight. He's uh, I I tried to hit him up, but no, no good. So we paint. Nothing wrong with that. The bear. <clears throat> Alright friends, well tonight we're going to be painting a bear. And more specifically, the fur on a bear. how I like to paint it. Hmm. You will. And... Where is my color that I want? Good, mate. Well, you can thank Bucks mostly. His feedback's generally better than mine. All right, let's go. Uh, I'm actually just going to fill that in a little bit more. What am I using? All right. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm missing a color. What color did I use? I feel like I'm missing a color. Hmm. Did I use that? Did I use that green? Maybe I use middle stone. Yeah, I think I use middle stone. The best thing about Hero Quest is the broadsword. Every time we play a game that has a broadsword, like we played Thunderstone Quest last night. Um, yeah. It's pretty great. Uh, I will send you a link in the chat and you can see what sort of video I am making, friend. I haven't done my audio yet. Um... But this is this is the rough uh, intent is to use this to make proper tutorial videos. All right.
So when I'm coming up with these color schemes for this um, for these figures, what I'm what I'm trying to do is is use a a simple base coat, um, which you could do in a uh, like a contrast paint or a zenithal prime contrast paint, or even just dry brushing. Um, you know, you could you could basically get to this step that I'm at now pretty pretty easily without an airbrush. And what I'm hoping to achieve uh, with that first layer, that first base tone, is to give people a um, you know an understanding of atmosphere, you know, in a way, because the uh, The atmosphere piece is one that uh, can feel a bit overwhelming sometimes, but by having a very simple way of approaching it and just saying, cool, well, every, every part of this model is going to be tinted by this color very slightly, just creates perhaps a little bit less um, of a barrier for people to understand atmosphere. I don't know, what are you what are your thoughts? Do you think it's a do you think it's a worthwhile um, part of the process to incorporate starting off with a with a colour to sort of create a sense of harmony over the piece? Is that adding value? <laughs> Enjoy Buxo. I'm an all about pineapple on pizza guy. It's fucking beautiful. Okay, let's go. Yeah, the the white was a was a good one I thought. Um and this is another example of, of painting white. Um because we're painting white fur, but as you can see we're starting from a teal base and a and a different base to what we started with the with the priest. Yeah, get it, Conrad. Hey, Marzipan, what's happening? <laughs> no optivizer for me, mate. You know I refuse. I am uh, hiding my face so I can use this footage for a video series I'm making, my friend. And that is the all extent of it. No ulterior motives. No optivizers. I'm starting to think I might need one, though. When I look at Colwell's stuff, I'm just like, man... Maybe I am missing a trick here with this Optivisor guy. <laughs> uh. 
uh yeah so painting fur for me is pretty easy um it's just lots and lots of little lines as you get further and further along in the in the process you'll you'll start to make those lines smaller and smaller and more more detailed but it's pretty much that We'll do some cool airbrushing. Yeah, I did uh, did do a little bit of painting uh, as well, and I have finished one of the other figures, which is the uh, the Ranger, which I'll show off in a second. Okay, from him. Yeah, no, things are good, mate. Especially now that I'm painting some toy soldiers. It's hard to go wrong. And that's the case. Yes, on, on this particular bear, um, I had an opportunity to sit down and talk to the sculptor. <laughs> um, and this... This area here is just primo for sculpting for a painter. I love it. It's like so, so simple and elegant. This up here is more of the of the traditional um, style of sculpting fur. Here's the ranger, by the way. And I made a slight change to the priest. It felt like he was missing a little bit of colour, but I'm still not convinced, actually. I'm, I'm, I made the book blue. I'm not sure I like it. Um, so I'm still trying to mull over if I'm going to stick with that. Yeah. You don't like the blue on the priest? <laughs> yep.
Yep, that's a that's a fair a fair comment. I may change it back. I may I may change it to a slightly different color. I, d I just felt like it was the, the model was missing a little bit of color. Um, on the whole, and so I was like, well, I might just um, might just try changing the book to it. But I can I can always just make it a darker blue. actually painted a polar bear for the um for the big diorama i did recently and so i was i was having a quick look at that earlier i was like how the fuck did i do that for <laughs> and i was trying to remember so this is uh this is where i got up to i think uh let's just get this apart make sure we're getting underneath that fur there Cool, man. Uh, I really, really like actually a, a, a lot of aspects of how the the push fit um, makes painting easier. <laughs> like that's been my experience so far. Is it just it, it every now and then you'd be like, oh yeah, I really want to get into a little bit of thingy there. And you just go like whip, whip it off, and away she goes. Yeah. Yep. Well, I figured it out <laughs> when I was looking at it because we're about to repeat it. Yeah, you'll see that the colors that I'm using here, it's interesting. It doesn't it doesn't look like um white on the palette. It looks like a really um sort of light green almost. And yet what it's looking like on screen is is almost a it's almost a white. No, but it's not. It's not. I see.
sometimes I think you, you you feel trapped a little bit by the sculpting. You have to you have to follow the brush strokes of the fur. I shan't be doing that. You wanted to. I don't think you trust in my self righteous suicide. I cry. Angels deserve to die. Don't know why that song's in my head. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. Whoops. Into your hands, I am your forsaken. Me. Into your hands, forsaken me. All right. So, oh, and that hand. What we might do now is do a little bit of contrast paint. Put this bad boy in. Cool. 
Perfect. Perfect. So we're actually going to use one I haven't used yet. One of my personal favorites on this. It's called Achillean Green. <laughs> so normally I would actually airbrush this right but what I'm trying to showcase on this um, video series is that you can achieve exactly the same things that I do with an airbrush just with a brush um, and so the key part to this this what I'm doing right now is that it's not a it's not a wash we're not trying to we're not trying to paint it on and then have it fill in the recesses maybe in some areas like around here but, but that's not that's not the intent what we're trying to do is is tint areas of the fur with this color May use a little bit of it up here to try and create a little more separation, but overall, it's not about using it for the way you would traditionally use a wash. So, this is absolutely an achievable technique without an airbrush. I just do it with an airbrush because it makes me look really cool. And I think it like I think it's a time saver, but like I'm not actually sure if it is a time saver because the amount of time I spend cleaning the airbrush and stuff, I wonder if I could just do this what I'm doing now and it would work out to be quicker. Filter. Why are you forsaking me? You can do it, Conrad. I believe in you, mate. Cause I'm a bear. <laughs> Trust in my self righteous suicide g'day all mate all might all mate what's happening your champion
my day is going well. Thank you. I think I might want to bring this back to be quite dark. It's maybe a little too light already. Haha, <laughs> cool man. Enjoy. Uh, this model is a, uh, she's called an Ursus War Bear. And she's from a board game called Oh, sworn into the deep woods that I am painting some models for and putting together some painting videos. I uh, do think we'll try and do a somewhat different mm, mm, true metallics on this figure. Uh, no, it's about, it's about 45. I'm self-righteous suicide. I cry. When angels deserve to die. Hmm, bronze could be cool, yep. Yeah, no, bronze could work. Um, if you haven't seen the artwork for this game, it's actually it's actually phenomenal. Um, I, I basically signed up for the game after seeing just just the artwork. <laughs> I was like, I'm in, I'm in. Uh, Olympus, 
yeah, I'm, I'm definitely just going to be finishing off this oath sworn stuff. Uh, I, I'm sort of putting myself on a bit of a timer here because I want to, I want to have the videos completed and available for people um, to to watch when the games arrive. The game's about um, probably four weeks away, I think, for most people. So I'm trying to finish all the models and. Um, and then cut together the videos and commentate the videos. So I'm, I'm putting myself on a pretty short time frame. So it's just going to be Oathsworn for the next little bit. Plus then I have the advantage of, uh, of playing my games of Oathsworn with the models painted, <laughs> which is a big bonus. I think I'm going to actually film a playthrough like I've done with my Kingdom Death campaigns. Um, film a playthrough of Oathsworn with fully painted everything. There's one downside to attempting that though, which is that very few people will be able to watch it if they don't want to get spoiled. Right, let's add some cool bits. Yep, the warden is a boss. So anyway, the reason I spoke about the art is I don't think the war bear has any bronze stuff in the art. So I haven't I haven't tried to stick religiously to the art, um, but I do want the there to be no like glaring, um, I guess background stuff. And I think I think the uh, the bear. The armor is actually significant in the in the law around uh, how they make the armor. I think it has some sort of specific metal. So we're going to stick with the metal, but I, I don't have the rat. No, I don't have any of the monsters. Um, that'll that'll everyone will just have to wait to see me paint that when I get the game. <laughs> so. This is a she, yeah. Uh, Olympus, the VODs only last for two weeks, but all of the VODs uh, have been uploaded to my YouTube. Um, and all of the uh, VODs that I'm filming right now will actually be turned into the painting videos that I'm going to work on, as well as I'm just going to post, you know, the full paint throughs um, on there as well. So people can just watch probably without any audio because I shan't be commentating for three hours for every one of those, but mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the VODs that'll go up will just be like um, the stream the stream stuff because I just copy-paste the streams and go, yep, if you want to watch how I painted it from start to finish, here it is. Yeah, the range is great. She's like a, like a tree race called the Adendri. 
be on here, yo. Well, the guy who's doing the art is, um, he's a work for Weta Workshop and all sorts of stuff. He's, uh, he's unreal. All right, a final highlight. Hmm. Don't want to look too close to the skin though. Maybe we'll go into that. Yeah, that's better. Yep, it has narrative audio read by Lord Commander Mormon from Game of Thrones. I actually think it's going to be probably the game of the year if it even half lives up to its promise. With the amount of cool stuff um, that's happening in it. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty unreal. You won't be able to get a copy now unless you can find a second-hand one, um, which may, there may be some out in the market once the thing, but there is going to be a reprint campaign later in the, uh, later in the year once they've finished shipping everything. Right, we're going to do some fancy airbrushing, I think, on that. Fancy airbrushing. <laughs> when I say fancy airbrushing, I just mean I'm going to do something that probably isn't targeted at the people who will be looking to utilize these videos this is more of a a skill based technique so but i'm just not happy with how that is looking by itself right now Oh, Dano, you're having a shocker today, mate. You're having an absolute Barry Crocker. <laughs> I've dropped so many things into my paints today. <laughs> uh, all right, what did I want? I wanted some dark blue. I think we'll use signal blue. Yeah, I will. I'll say, yeah, yeah, it's just totally doable with a brush. It is, look, everything is doable with a brush, mate. It is, but... The, the thing is, I don't know if I could do it with a brush. Because I'm so used to not using a brush these days. Oh, Emmanuel. 
Hello, mate. Welcome. I have. It looks so good. I am absolutely frothing. I am well, mate. Thank you. Dan, I. Uh, well, I'm not familiar with the character from the comics, so... It looks pretty cool to me. Was it no good from a comic perspective or something, or...? Yes, I do feel that way. Thank you, Airbrush. Cool. Okay, let's go. Rhinox hide. And black. G'day, Viv. Indeed, today we have painted fur.
do a slightly different uh, brown on this to some of the other ones. Make it a little bit darker. I think. Get out. Stand by while I just quickly hair dry this. Look at the muscularity. Okay, let's go. Oh, I'm in. Thank you for the raid, champion. I'm sorry I haven't got my uh, my shout out set up at the moment, my friend, but everyone should go follow that champion, I'm in. How was your stream? I'm 
just put my camera on so you can see me. I'm using this footage for some stuff. Welcome. Yeah, let me let me show you a couple of things I've uh, I've done. Um, hello, friends. Yes, I don't normally paint board. Well, I do normally paint board game stuff, but I also paint busts. And figures and all sorts of stuff. And if you want to see something that I did, uh, I can't put it on here because, oh, maybe I can. Let me go. Media source. Thank you. Thank you. Here you go. This is a thing I did recently. Wow. Good work, Deno. There you go. <laughs> it took me a fair while to do that, believe it or not. <laughs> About six weeks or seven, seven weeks. Been a while. Been a while since we've seen it. Which orc piece, mate? I've done. I've done a few orc pieces. <laughs> Your best bet's to go scroll my Instagram friends and check that out. Oh, yeah, that's a cool piece. Yeah, it's a couple of couple of months ago. I will do. I will do. I mean, thank you. Always on the lookout for cool models I can paint. This one's for uh, these. This figure's for a board game um, called Oath Sworn Into the Deep Wood. It's, uh, yeah, got some pretty incredible models for board games figures especially, but just in general, the figures are cool. Pop a link in the chat, Lethal Shadow Mate, for everyone else. I said, pop, pop a link in the chat, champion. So everyone can go find your cool figures. The power of Twitch, people, bringing people together. How good. See you, Bucks.
Say hundreds, a lot of models. <laughs> Awesome friends, yeah. No, I appreciate the raid and um, all the new new people coming to the stream. I I do normally have a uh, new follower alert and all that sort of stuff set up, but I've actually turned it off because I'm I'm using this footage. Sorry, I'm using this footage to make some videos with. So can't have stuff popping up on screen. Uh, Loot Kitty, I've been painting for, for a few years. Um, I started painting display figures about um, six years ago. But prior to that, I'd been painting models for a fair chunk of my life, of my adult life. Um, but mostly, mostly wargaming figures and that sort of gear. But yeah, last few years, it's mostly just been display stuff. I do love, I do love um, techniques that are quick and fast though. So in many ways, I'm still a, still an army painter at heart. <laughs> yes, no, look, wet, wet blending is, is kind of difficult. Um, I probably won't be doing any videos on wet blending in this, in this video series that I'm working on, but it's a good technique. Um, yeah, it just takes, takes a bit of time. Um, should I do that? I think I'll do the leather. I think I'll do the leather. All right. Thank you. Yeah, this is this has all been done on this stream, so you can uh, you can definitely go back and watch how it was done. Um, if you wanted to see it. Or on YouTube, indeed. Yes, I upload all of my all of my vods to YouTube mostly. 
with an occasional exception. Thanks, Sleepy Slang. Should make you a fucking mod, mate. that I had an awesome video pop up on my YouTube suggestions from the film 300 it's just cool shit from the movie 300 I love that movie when it came out well it made me start a campaign of the game that I'm playing at the moment Imperium Classics as the Greeks against the Persians <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm going to play a campaign. Yeah, exactly, exactly, mate. Um, so, you know, leather is a leather is a, a really cool uh, object to paint because it, it does tend to have uh, lots of little little scratches and so forth. And in this instance, right, we've, we've got a lot of really great texture that's been sculpted on the figure. Um, but what we're going to try and do is use uh, the... The texture on the figure and some additional texture that that we're adding with brush strokes to create a more interesting um interesting looking leather yeah so if we zoom in a bit here So after we do a wash of um, a darker brown, the wash will settle into the recesses as it normally does. Um, and then we'll still have uh, on the flat surfaces the texture um, as well. So it's sort of like, yeah. Just another little way you can create some visual interest and uh, it's a form of it's a form of contrast when you have like the smooth fabric that we've got just underneath this this belt here alongside some some textured leather it creates you know a visual break between the two which will help with how it looks overall
And a last little bit. Get out, Jared. This is the moment right now to be bold. Sleepy slang. This is the moment. You push. You push your contrasts. You go harder than you think you've ever had to go before. And then when you step back and look at it, you go, yes. Why was I so afraid of contrast before? Why? Why? Yes, Pete versus Warbear, she's an awesome figure. Uh, we'll do... We'll pop. Pete versus Warbear. Yeah, no, we're going to contrast it. I just wanted to do the other bits first. Yep. Strong highlight, rich sepia. Could be my middle name. Uh, red dark sided. G'day, mate. Welcome. Uh, that's a good question. Let me show you what my plan is at the moment. I haven't, I haven't painted any yet, but um, if I grab this, this chap. So uh, yeah, this is the exile. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is attach them to like I just there's just a ruler and some some kids blocks, um, and I'm just going to attach them with blue tack. So I painted one arm on the model. And then you can see it's a nice snug fit. <laughs> uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue, or not glue, I'm just going to attach this one as well so that I can see the lighting that it needs to be and, and you know, see where it needs to be, how it needs to be painted alongside it. So I'll just glue like four or five of them on here and that way I'll paint them all at once. I'm probably only going to do maybe two or three options per um, uh, per person, but um, yeah, here's the ring job. And the curve. 
This one's my favorite so far, I think. Pew, pew, pew. Yep. And the priest. The priest. Oh. Yep, so those are the four we've done, and we're doing the bear tonight. You're welcome. It is a it is a a significantly different challenge to um anything I've had to paint before. Just in terms of you know, how do you how do you set it up so that it, you can still have it look right um when it gets added to the model. That's the piece that, that gets does my head in. Like obviously I can paint it, but if you paint an arm and then you put it on and the arm looks like it belongs to a different person, well, it doesn't look good. I enjoy everything when it comes to painting toy soldiers, Letheus. Everything. Awesome. <laughs> I'm not sure what the priest's doing, but he's he's certainly he's certainly doing some sort of magical assault of some description. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome. When you're living on a dream. going to use two different techniques with those contrast paints coming up. The first one being just dead set slamming them onto the color. <laughs> this is just smashing Saigor Brown all over that Albert except for the metal bit, and we'll call it a day. Which is my favorite use of that particular color. I can tell you how to get instantly good without learning, yes. Um, it's called Go Into The Matrix and download all of the skills straight into your brain. In terms of how to do it in real life, yeah, there's no silver bullet, mate. Sorry to tell you. Saigo Brown! Mm.
This one's a really, really good thick colour. That will cover over an area. It has a little bit of colour underneath, like this tealy colour. It'll make for some interesting interplay. Yep, get on the blower to Elon, he'll sort it out. Must have read the fucking faces. Must have robbed them of their cause. Sick and thirst, sick and thirst, get it together. Soft white glow in the cranium. A bullseye made sedated. Beware! Beware! Have you ever tasted skin? Sink your, sink your teeth in. Have you ever tasted skin? Catatonic leisure at 1,000 miles per hour. <laughs> Get on the blower. Indeed. It's a Southern Hemisphere phrase of saying, pick up the telephone and call someone. Okay, let's go. Yeah, sorry in advance. Some of the things I say. <laughs> my dad, my dad and I have so many like things that we say with literally without even thinking about it. Like just, it's a normal turn of phrase for us. We'll just be having a conversation and we'll, we'll crack it out. Like the, the one that I've pretty much popularized on this stream is we're not here to fuck spiders. Like I, I literally say that unironically and people, people on the stream when I first started saying that were like, what? <laughs> so we're not here to fuck spiders. Let's fucking go. Get it done. Thank you, I don't know, Jack. <laughs> but people think I'm people think I'm taking the piss. People think I'm having a having a lend that I don't that I don't actually say that for real. I say it all the time. All the time. Oh, uh, exactly. Let's just do it. Let's just get in. Get it done. All right.
Yes, yes, they are indeed pre-sculpted bases. Welcome back, Conrad. Was it a good delivery? Cool. Uh, Jared, you will be able to watch it because uh, I've done everything on the stream so far, but I used a lot of um, a lot of blues and greens um, to kick us off. We had a very teal um, starting palette. Um, actually you won't be able to watch it because I just realized that I'm, I'm not, my palette's not on the screen. However, you will be able to watch the video. Because the video will have all of the specific colors because I showed them. Okay, let's go. All right, let's let's paint some silver. I'm jazzed for this silver. This should be quite fun. So we're gonna use we're gonna use some different colors for the silver um, shading and stuff. To replicate the. Um, special type of metal this is used these people use i think we may fill those things in those recesses Yeah, I think the the Ursus, um, the war bears, they're sort of similar to uh, the Mandalorian in that they can only add to their armor collection when they um, when they like defeat a, an enemy or something. And so, the more pieces of armor which is made out of this special metal, I remember reading in the Kickstarter updates this info about it. Yeah, it's a pretty cool story. I think there's like young war bears which don't have a lot of armor go out into the world to fight things and try and get more prowess. Yes, indeed, we are doing true metallics, my friend. It just tends to look better for board games figures. Is is you know, enough of a reason. 
plus it has to do with the the audience I'm trying to cater towards for this series. This is a super fun model to paint. I don't know, Jack. So definitely pick up a paintbrush and get it done. Have a paint. <laughs> Good one, Conrad. Working beautifully. My girlfriend would have appreciated that. She says to say hello, by the way. I was talking to her the other day and she's like, oh, do you talk to Conrad or Stewie or those guys? I was like, oh, yeah, Conrad gets on my stream every now and then. She was like, ah, oh, awesome. Tell him I said hello. <laughs> I shall. Okay. Be aware. If we can. No, we'll keep that on because we're going to do. <laughs> do it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm about to try something I haven't done for a while, which is use mostly, mostly paints. All right, so what I think I'm going to do is use some blues like this and like this. And I think maybe some some of this color. No, that's too light. And we'll use some of this as well. It's a very dark color. So 
got to start with some of this. Okay, let's go. very cold palette on this which actually doesn't fit in with the rest of the figures I've painted so far um, so we may have to go for a warm glaze here as well just to help that actually Grumph, no, look, my friend, um, I'm, I've been very fortunate to uh, receive uh, the models in advance to do um, some painting videos for, for Oswan. So um, I've literally only received the, the core hero pledge, nothing else. Uh, no no monsters, nothing but, but the 12 core heroes. I did a little um, video the other day where I showed off the figures, uh, prepared them for painting. Um, in the process of this is actually going to go um, into one of the painting videos uh, this footage so um, yeah indeed although I have a saying that I really like which is uh, um, the, the harder I work the luckier I get so I like to think a little bit of luck a little bit of hard work goes into Getting something like this. Seb's tutorial on non-metallic metals on Cool Mini or Not is still the pinnacle of true metallic metal painting without exception. It is an awesome tutorial. Although Grumph, it is very, very likely that I will actually receive my my copy before most because I'm in Australia, so we do tend to get stuff in advance. I do have a YouTube channel, yes, mate. Uh, the link is somewhere in my in my about section, so check it out there. Ah, oh, sleepy slang, the mod. <laughs>
I reckon what we might do is airbrush some blues over the metal. I think that will look pretty cool. I just realized I forgot these little bits. <sighs> so this will make it the fifth figure now that I've completed for Ice Swan. seven core heroes to go <laughs> but a few more figures uh, overall there's, uh, there's 11 little critters that can get summoned for the grove maiden And then there's the four uh, villager type models that you can use if one of your characters dies. And yeah, then when the game turns up, I'll be painting a shit ton of monsters. Uh, well, that information is not actually public knowledge. There is... Uh, a link on the Kickstarter page that shows the um, monsters you can face. I don't know if it shows all of them. Um, so yeah, best guesses. It says, the Kickstarter page says there's like a hundred figures in the box. Um, or something like that, 112 or something. So it'll be somewhere around 
an extra 60 or 70 figures is my guess. Um, however, however, the first monster that you face is a rat, a giant rat, and she comes with 12 little rats. So that's racking up the numbers. <laughs> that's cranking up some numbers there. Just some little ratties. I think I may need to do my airbrush blue and then do my varnish and then come back in with this light color. means I need to do this
Let's work completely fucking up with a pair of tweezers, Deno. Some of your best, mate. <laughs> Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Toys are king over here. Uh, yeah, I deleted it all so I can use it for, uh, this, this stuff for video footage, mate. It is still present. We will still have it. Uh, when I finish doing these videos, we will go back to probably a new overlay, but we'll, we'll go back to an overlay. Nah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't like relief punches, eh? They're fine, but. They're just too flat. Like buying a leaf punch and then crinkling up the leaves. I'm just going to pay $6 for a little thing of leaves <laughs> that lasts me for like five years. Yeah, the new Thor trailer was awesome. Um, yeah, just can't wait. Cannot wait for the new Thor. It's going to be amazing. All right, yes, so. Everything he touches turns to gold, it's amazing.
<laughs> Put me down for a little from column A and a little from column B, thanks. <laughs> All right, I am going to go and varnish this now. Yeah, actually, I might I might call it a day on this on this uh, stream, friends. Actually, we might um might just varnish this and then I'll do a little bit more tweaking. <laughs> well, mate, you're talking about America's ass, so Zyren, I I am purely because. These are gaming figures that will be used on the table. But, the caveat, um, I do finish off the metals after I've varnished everything. So I do a, a true metals after all the varnish is dried. But it's not normally a process I would do. No, I wouldn't normally varnish and then do true metals. I would normally do that after. Or not varnish at all. Everything he touches turns to gold. It's amazing. The short answer is no, I don't think loss does anything. I mean, I'm sure it does something, but I don't think it does anything to help the metallics look more metallic. All right, friends, that's our Ursus Warbear. Uh, probably feel like we just, maybe we're going to need to do some splashes of blood or something on her. I definitely don't think that, um, Rust is appropriate given the story behind her, so. All right. Friends, it's been a pleasure. Hope you've enjoyed this painting. Uh, let's go find someone to raid. Who's on? Who's that or about? Oh, Jose Da Vinci's on. Love that guy. What are you what are you painting, Jose? 
Oh, he's not. He's he's finished. He's hosting Esmeralda. Damn. Love Jose. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate that. Let's see. We have... Tyranid Queen. I don't think I've seen her before. Oh, no. I have seen her before. Let's raid into her anyway. She seems fine. She's painting a big dude. All right. Uh, back on Sunday morning, uh, likely that I will be finishing off some of the other Ice One models. Not sure how many. Um, I hope we'll be at 10 by then. So, yeah. All right, friends. Appreciate it. See you all soon. Bye-bye. Big dinner out.